In this video, we're going to explore the Hotspot widget in the all-new Adobe Captivate. So as I've been exploring the various widgets in the all-new Adobe Captivate, I've thought back to my older projects where I've used or tried to use uh, similar learning interactions in the past. And the hotspot is something that I've generally avoided. There used to be a hotspot question in Adobe Captivate Classic and earlier that quite frankly just fell short of usability. You couldn't really do anything with it. You were very limited with where you could place those hotspots and of course, um, it just didn't work with fluid box responsive design. So I've done a preliminary look at this new widget in the all new Adobe Captivate. And I have to say, I'm pretty pleased. Let me show you. To add a hotspot to this particular slide here in the all new Adobe Captivate, just click your mouse on the add new widget icon in your toolbar. And we'll select hotspot down below here. Now, in this case here, I plan to use a different theme than the theme that's built into Adobe Captivate. So I'm just going to go ahead and select project properties in the bottom right hand corner here. And we're going to change theme. And I've created something I call the CN Tower theme, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Mostly it's about me using um, the this particular font here, which is kind of tall and narrow, kind of like the CN Tower. So I've uh, added that there. If you're interested in creating your own themes, I have a separate video on that and you can access that video from right here. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this background image with the image that I have in mind. And uh, all I need to do is right click on this image and replace image. Now I could choose images from the Adobe Captivate Assets Store, or I could bring in my own image from my computer. So that's what I'm going to do in this case here. And I have an image in mind here. Let's open that up. So that replaces the image that we saw previously with something that's more appropriate. You could start by moving your hotspots to where you want them, but I find it a little easier to work with them when they're all in a row like this. I'm going to change the zoom to about 75% because that's going to reveal the callouts along the bottom here. And it's convenient to have those accessible as you design your slide. For us uh, right now, I'm going to start by going to the visual properties within the properties inspector. And uh, we're going to uh, do a couple of things here. Let's start off by selecting the widget itself. And you can see that there are a number of hotspots. I actually am planning for all six hotspots to be used. I could select one of the other design options that are available, but for my purposes today, this first one is fine. I've already looked at these and I thought, eh, well, let's go with the first one. It's usually the best. And in this case, I think it is. Now, with every block or widget in the all new Adobe Captivate, it's made up of components. That's how sort of the new paradigm is in Adobe Captivate. So I can turn on or off any of these. I'm gonna in fact use all of them. So, you know, that's not a big deal, but uh, let's say for example, if I didn't want my hotspot callouts to have an image, I could turn those off for all six of them at once with this uh, checkbox here. I'm gonna use those, but uh, I could turn them off if I wished as well. Also too, you can change the appearance of your interaction. Like what is the background solid color? Uh, is there a solid color at all? In this case, there's not. Uh, do we want a border around the widget? Do we want an inner shadow? And we can customize all of our callouts at once actually, which is useful to do. So I'm going to keep padding nice and tight. So we'll just keep that right down at one pixel there. The rounded radius uh, for the corners of my callouts, I'm actually going to make them squared off, which usually gives you more room to put content. So that's helpful as well. Solid color white, I think works in this case here. And if you wanted to, I'm going to turn off all the drop shadows. I'm not a big fan of drop shadows unless they're really needed. Uh, and you could add a border if you wanted to this as well. 
around. And again, this is for the callouts. Let's click on one of them so you can see what I'm working with here. There's the callout. And uh, if we wanted to have that border around them, like let's say we want a nice black border, we could add that here. I'm not going to in this case. I just wanted to get rid of the drop shadow of all of them. So appearance and then the individual elements within the widget are sometimes controllable here. This is where the callouts are, and we can adjust these. Uh, let's start to uh, customize my hotspot callouts here, starting with the first one. I'm going to change the title of this one to SkyPod, and I have some text for that. I'm going to pop in here and I can change the image for the sky pod. Go into my system and select the image that I found for the sky pod there. Let's do call out number two. And in this case, this is for the attraction known as Edge Walk, where you walk outside the CN Tower, obviously harnessed up to some very strong supports. And there's an image of that you will not be finding me using this attraction at the CN Tower. It's crazy. Call out three. We're going to talk about the restaurant that's at the CN Tower. It rotates around, thus the name 360 Restaurant. And I've got some text for that and a particular image that I wish to use for that as well. Some people enjoying their dining experience there. Call out number four is pertaining to the main observation level. And like before, I have some text already planned for that. As you can see, if you're not having to figure stuff out as you go, uh, customizing this content, uh, you know, as a developer is very quick and easy to do. Uh, again, I've spent some time thinking about what this interaction will be. So all that stuff is planned out. Let's go to call out five, where we're talking about the high speed elevators. Some interesting facts about that. And an image, in this case, I chose an image of just the tower portion of the CN Tower there. Call out six. We're talking about at the base here. There are some interesting facts about the base. And I will copy that text, paste it in, and I will bring an image in that I thought was appropriate for talking about the base. It's the view of the tower from the actual base itself there. So, I mean, I've left these hotspots, you know, in a row or in a line across the width of this here. We can actually now move these into more appropriate positions. So for call out one, for example, it's talking about the sky pod, which is located right there. Call out two is edge walk, so we can just kind of bring that to the top of the observation pod. The 360 restaurant is, I don't know, approximately there. The observation level is the lower portion of the, the center pod of the tower. The high speed elevators, we can just place that one over the tower and the base of the tower can go down here. So we have this pretty much done. It's not too difficult to build a hotspot interaction. But you might be wondering, what does this look like in responsive design? In the past, Adobe Captivate Classic and Adobe Captivate 2019 and 2017, anytime you added a hotspot slide, which was a question type in those cases, uh, it didn't really work very well. It wasn't really a great solution with uh, the fluid boxes that we used to use. But let's take a look at this now and see how this works. So on a desktop view here, we can see that this looks pretty good. We may have to scroll to see all the content. That's okay. And that that's, I think, the, the brilliance of Adobe Captivate 12 is that, you know what, sometimes the content is not going to fit in this exact aspect ratio and resolution. So let's just allow it to fill other areas. And, and of course, if the learner has to scroll their mouse or, or use their finger to swipe down a little bit, that's okay as well. 
Uh, let's see what uh, a tablet looks like. So when you run out of room left to right, you'll see these uh, double arrows uh, that allow you to move the interaction to a more suitable spot, depending on what it is that you're trying to look for at that moment here. Same thing with uh, mobile phone. Obviously, it starts on the left there, and if you need to see all this content as it is, it's all available to you there. Let's click on these hotspots and see how that works there. If you click the hotspot again, it closes it up, allowing you to look at the other hotspots that are available. And this is pretty cool. Once you've visited all the hotspots, your next button becomes available and you can proceed with the rest of your e-learning course. Sometimes the proof, of course, is in the pudding, so I did record my screen on my iPhone just to show you what this interaction looks like on a typical smartphone here. So you can see all the hotspots work. And, you know, it's very easy for me to just simply tap on my screen and complete the interaction. In addition, of course, those left and right arrows to allow me to view all the content if it's too wide for this particular phone. It completely works the way you'd expect it to work, uh, just like it does on your desktop. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.